and human friends and everyone else. Welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic. Always nice to see you up here in the attic above Horror Hotel where we look for cool old masks. And you know, I, I, are you like me, folks? Do you, do, you, um, do you like to keep a souvenir of every time you help your friends out with a little free dental assistance, a little free dentistry? Do you like to keep a little... Sure you do. I think we all do. Anyway back to masks. Look, I just happened to find a really cool one here. Tonight's mask is, look at that, it's a little number entitled Jukebox. Yeah, that's the name of it, Jukebox. Now, if you think that's not a good name for a mask, I agree. Uh, Jukebox was sculpted and designed by none other than the famous William Malone, director of movies like Parasomnia and the uh, House on Haunted Hill remake and a designer and creator of a number of interesting and noteworthy monsters like the Singenor and the Thanatoid. And uh, speaking of the Thanatoid, which is a mask, that uh, a Bill Malone mask that was uh, offered first by Distortions and then many years later by Trick or Treat Studios, this guy apparently started out as a relative of the Thanatoids. Uh, he was, he was uh, maybe Thanatoid's brother or something. He was, he was a Thanatoid. And for some strange reason, when he first uh, appeared on the scene, which was 1984, the 84-85 Halloween season, uh, he, was, he was christened Jukebox. And you know, back when I was still living, I never really got that, I never really liked that. I thought, Jukebox, really? Because he looks like, is that what like the mean kids at Alien Elementary School called him? You know, was it like calling the fat kid fatty? Hey, jukebox head! You've got a jukebox head! Is that what they did? Is that Because that would emotionally scar a guy and would explain his uh, bad attitude in later episodes. Where was I? Oh yeah, jukebox. Anyway, um, I, I would have called him something more specific than that. Not, not just jukebox. I mean, why didn't they come up with a weird alien name for him like Zarglaxanoid? In fact, why hasn't anybody ever done a mask called Zarglaxanoid? Don't you think that's a good alien name? You don't think so. Zarglaxanoid? No? Okay, maybe not as good as when I first heard it 10 seconds ago, but uh, anyway, Jukebox here enjoyed some popularity. The initial uh, run from 1985 to, I believe, 1991. So he was in, in production for just about seven years, and at that time he was a glow-in-the-dark mask. He was mostly glowing in the dark and just had a little uh, blue-green and a little black going on uh, for shading and then the rest of him glowed in the dark and uh, he was reissued about a decade after that in uh, 2001 I believe as Blood Beast. Now uh, unlike the 1985 through 91 edition jukebox the Blood Beast edition did not glow in the dark and it was basically made of uh, just flesh-colored latex with a little bit of dark gray shading uh, and then had random blood splattered and smeared all over it in no particular uh, 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 pattern. And isn't it weak that we call uh, the color of Caucasian people's skin flesh color? You know, they do air quotes, flesh color. You know, I don't like political correctitude most of the time, but even when I was a kid, it kind of bothered me in art class that everybody called that color flesh tone because it seemed like most people on the planet aren't necessarily the same color and it always kind of seemed to me like the white people must think they're the only ones made out of flesh because they claim proprietary rights of the color name flesh tone you know so I don't know but um, I, th I think we should call that Caucasian or something I don't think we should call it flesh or skin, but that's what we call it, uh, or they call it in the art world. Sure, I'm up here in the attic. I can call it anything I want, really. Um, Juke here, that's what his friends call him, Juke. Juke uh, was uh, only available for a short time in the Blood Beast uh, version, which did not make as big a hit as the original Glow in the Dark version. Uh, however, he refused to stay dead like a lot of good monsters, and in 2011, he came back as part of the Don Post Back from the Grave line, which was a briefly offered series of older masks reissued in 2011, of which this is one. This particular one here that you see before you is not one of the original glow-in-the-dark ones. It's one of the um, Back from the Grave 2011 
editions and this time uh, he had what is probably his best uh, color scheme as you can see he's just kind of a bone color here kind of a uh, kind of a light beigey tan bone color with a little bit of brown and black and then he's got these sort of uh, neon yellow yellow green eyes and uh, that's that's the story of old juke the spook and uh, you can still find these on eBay occasionally and from uh, various uh, mask dealers so if you like strange alien creatures from the brain of Bill Malone I recommend good old jukebox even though he looks he looks synthetic he looks designy okay I'm not sure designy is a word he looks patterned somehow he doesn't look totally organic but that's part of the uh, charm you know that's part of the design so until next time get out of this nasty musty dusty crusty old attic and go out and find some fresh air if there is any to be found <laughs>